Hello and welcome to the AG Politics Podcast, the show that discusses African political affairs with the extra twist of covering not only African political issues, but also geopolitical affairs with a clear progressive lens. I am your host, Geographical Queen. In today's episode, I will discuss the significance and confusion about poverty in Africa. I will be deliberating about the financial imprisonment of African countries in this global world. Some Western financial institutions have issued the poverty stamp on the African continent, but in reality, is Africa really poor? No, Africa is not poor. The powers that be keeps Africa poor. In a business investment forum, which I once participated in, there was the discussion of most African countries having financial difficulties, especially where significant amount of money are concerned because they are allegedly poor and cannot handle such kinds of funds. I would propose that all these global South countries which think they are poor and accept this poor tag to take a look at a country like Russia in the 90s. These were the years and the times when Russia unwisely believed that there was something known as Western democracy, which came with some other product known as globalization and open markets. Suddenly, Russia was managed by some World Bank officials. These officials advised the then President Yeltsin to sell off state properties in the name of privatization to generate funds. Human as people are, a handful of Western brainwashed staves would soon purchase all or most national properties with their funny foreign partners. These staves swiftly left the country to spend their ill-gotten wealth in their adopted Western countries. The most popular one was the golden visa invitation to the United Kingdom. Lavish lifestyles like the possession of mansions in the West, yachts, private jets, and private banks became the order of the day, whilst the majority of Russians were struggling. This few crop of successful businessmen in Russia were then known as the oligarchs. Gradually, Russia worked its way out and managed to win itself off this Western democratic globalization scam 20 years later. In Russia, today, 20 years later after trying to get rid of all these programs, Russia today has more than enough for its citizens and beyond. 
The same is what is happening in most southern countries, especially African countries. With the Bretton Woods institutions like the IMF and World Bank hanging ropes around the necks of these countries, these allegedly developing countries have no choice but to follow instructions from these institutions. Most banks in most of these countries are not even supposed to handle about $10 million without the permission of the United States. All financial transactions are to be reported to the United States and as if that was not enough, their currencies have been rendered worthless than the papers on which they were printed on. The currencies of these few Western countries are imposed on them, pushing their own national currencies to zero values. With such strings around their necks, the few politicians who manage to get into power try their best to secure their financial status by saving their ill-gotten funds in the same Western countries that prevents them from developing their countries for rainy days. At the end of it, just a few people are breathing and the majority of the population are suffering. To confuse these so-called poor countries for their development failures, that was actually programmed for them by the same Western financial advisors. They accused them of corruption and bad governance, making African leaders especially in their countries always looking like failures when these Western countries are the ones actually benefiting from the poor, so-called poor countries paying up the debts of the so-called rich Western countries. How can Southern countries be poor when they are the ones actually paying for the debts of the so-called rich Western countries with their resources, be it human resources, be it brain drain, which occurs most of the time through migration, or be it IMF debts. In reality, who is poor? Barely 10 years ago, the two most developed countries of our times, Russia and China, they were supposed to be poor because they were not democratic like Western countries, have proven to be the two most thriving countries by ignoring the so-called Western financial democracies. To be clear with ourselves, do all countries need to follow the foreign policies of other countries to progress? Or it will be appropriate for countries to rather check their own environment to develop their countries according to their resources, their needs, and their capabilities. So what do you think? Can anyone listen to this reality scenario here without pinching her or himself? Well, leave your comments below in the comment section. And thanks for tuning in. I will be back 
in the next podcast. Good day.